हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल क्लिनिकल बायोकेमिस्ट्री बाय डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ लीवर फंक्शन टेस्ट वेयर वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द टेस्ट फॉर द डिटॉक्सिफिकेशन रिएक्शन डन बाय द लीवर सो हियर वी आर गोइंग टू सी थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ टेस्ट दैट इज हिप्यूरिक एसिड सिंथेसिस टेस्ट मोनोइथाइल ग्लाइसिन जेलिडिन टेस्ट दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल एज एम टेस्ट एंड एंटीपायरिन ब्रिथ टेस्ट Uh, we have already done two parts, uh, two uh, previous part of the liver function test, where we have talked about the secretory function of the liver and the excretory function of the liver. So, if you see the total liver function test, these are the five different parts of the liver function test, and one is diagnostic test. So, we have already done secretory functions, uh, where we have talked about the bilirubin test from the serum, from the urine, and we have done the excretory function, where we have seen uh, bromosulfthalein and rose bengal blue test. Now we are going to see detoxification reaction test. So first we will see what is detoxification reaction. Detoxification reaction is a test by which liver normally removes any undesirable, any foreign substance, any toxin, any chemicals, any drugs which is not from my body, it is a foreign particles, foreign substance. So there are two phases of this re detoxification reaction. We are going to call phase 1 and we are going to call phase 2. This phase 2 phases of reaction is important. In the first phase of reactions, we are going to do uh, bioactivation reaction. This reaction, is, this phase one is called as bioactivation reaction, where we normally we are going to make substance more active by uh, doing some kind of chemical reaction. So three important chemical reactions occur here in case of phase one, that is oxidation, reductions, and hydrolysis. Whatever substance we are going to get in the phase one, those chemicals, uh, uh, activated chemicals. Is going for phase two reaction. In the phase two reactions, we are having a conjugation reactions. So this is called as bioactivation reaction, and phase two is called as conjugation reactions. In conjugation reactions, normally we are going to add some kind of chemical entity, chemical moiety, so that it will be more water soluble. So phase one makes substance more active, whereas phase two normally makes substance more water soluble. Except two reactions: one is methylation, second one is acylation. So these two normally makes water insoluble, otherwise almost all the chemical um, conjugation reactions makes water more water soluble. So once it will be water soluble, substance can be excreted either through the urine or through the feces. So we are going to see these uh, detoxification reaction. If liver will for uh, means the detoxification part is perfectly fine, then uh, so that will be giving going to give us the liver's detoxification reactions status. Now, in this one, the most important part is, in phase 1, we are going to use number of enzymes, but one of the most important en enzyme is cytochrome P450. So, in most of the cases, cytochrome P450 enzyme is going to be used for this phase 1 reactions. So, we are having three different type of tests which, by which we are going to uh, evaluate the detoxification reactions status of the liver. First one is hippuric acid synthesis test. Second one is monoethyl glycine gelidine test this is also uh, called as MEGX test and third one is antipyrin breath test so first one is hippuric acid test we are going to see one by one so first in case of hippuric acid test hippuric acid is normally produced by the liver when benzoic acid combines with the glycine so this glycine normally liver is going to synthesize glycine so if liver is going to synthesize, synthesize glycine so this glycine is going to combine with benzoyl chloride or benzoic acid derivative and ultimately gives us benzoyl glycine this is hippuric acid so chemical name of hippuric acid is benzoyl glycine so this is the chemical reactions and this chemical reaction we are going to measure the excretory function of the liver so in this case two important functions uh, factor which decides this reactions first liver should synthesize glycine in sufficient amount because this glycine we are not going to provide from outside so liver has to synthesize glycine so synthetic function of glycine should be there in sufficient amount and second liver should conjugate uh, with it with the benzoic acid so this reaction so for the excretion of benzoyl chloride in the form of benzoyl glycine it reacts on depends on two reactions first production of glycine and second this conjugation reactions of the liver so both takes place in the liver only 
for a reliable result, uh, normal kidney should no patient should not have any kind of kidney disorders, any uh, any kind of renal disorders. So kidney function should be normal in a person who is going to perform this test. So in this case, uh, we are going to give six gram of sodium benzoate uh, dissolved in two hundred ml of water, and orally we are going to give. After a light breakfast, um, after breakfast roughly two to three hours, we are going to give this uh, six gram of sodium benzoate to a person, and means uh, it's uh, he has to go for urination. So his blood uh, means uh, urinary bladder should be completely empty, because we are going to collect uh, excretion of uh, this benzoate uh, means benzoate glycine in from the urine. So we will collect the urine and then we will measure it. So urine is going to be collected uh, for the next four hours. And the amount of hippuric acid expressed uh, excreted is in the urine that is going to be estimated. Theoretically, whatever six gram of sodium benzoate we have given to a patient, this will be going to give seven point five gram of hippuric acid. So, if you have seen previous reactions, uh, sodium benzoate reacts with glycine and gives uh, sodium give us hippuric acid or benzoate glycine. So, six gram sodium benzoate gives you seven point five gram of hippuric acid. Now, out of this 7.5 gram of hippuric acid, so if person is healthy, uh, if the person healthy, even in case of healthy person, 60 percent of the sodium benzoate, whatever uh, ben sodium benzoate we have given means 6 gram of sodium benzoate we have given, so 7.7.5 uh, gram hippuric acid, so 60 percent of this sodium benzoate. That is roughly equivalent to 4.5 gram of hippuric acid out of 7.5. So they have made 7.5 gram of hippuric acid from this one. 4.5 gram of hippuric acid should be excreted by the end of 4 hours. So at the end of 4 hours, we have collected the urine, and from the in that one, we are going to measure hippuric acid. So after 4 years, this much amount of hippuric acid should be excreted by the person if in a if he is. Healthy or his liver is perfectly fine. He doesn't have any kind of kidney disorder. Any kind of reduction in this hippuric acid excretion means if they are going to excrete less than this 4.5 gram, then we are going to call it hepatic damage is there or abnormality is there. Roughly, we are going to talk about hepatic damage if the excretion will be less than 3 gram. we are having another form of this hippuric acid synthesis test where we are not going to give oral solutions of hippuric acid um, oral solution of sodium benzoate we are going but we are going to give intravenous injection of sodium benzoate here we are going to give 1.77 g of sodium benzoate dissolved in 20 ml of distilled water and slowly we are going to give intravenous injections here also uh, before the injection the patient had to empty the gall bladder Uh, which is discarded so once we are going to inject this one then after that one we are going to collect the urine here we are going to collect the urine sample after 1 hour and 2 hour after the injections because in previous case we have given orally so oral from the absorption from the git tracts takes some time that's why we have collected urine after to take it we have taken four, after 4 hours of sample but in this case directly we have injected into the blood circulation so that time which has taken normally for absorption that we have discarded so that's why we are going to collect sample after 1 hour and 2 hour and 50% of sodium benzoate uh, should be excreted in 1 hour and 75 gram of 75% of the sodium benzoate should be excreted at the end of second hour of uh, injections so in two sample we have taken uh, one at 1 hour second hour uh, second at 2 uh, hours So first sample in the one hour, fifty percent of the sodium benzoate had to be excreted. So in the second hours means in the second hour sample, maximum seventy five gram percent of the sodium benzoate should be found in the urine. This is in the normal healthy person. If this amount is going to be reduced, it means person is having any kind of liver abnormality or liver is having disorder. so means that is only in the detoxification reactions either they don't have enzymes they are having any kind of tissue damage they can have cirrhosis they can have liver hepatitis whatever different kind of disorder means liver is abnormal this is one test that is hippuric acid test we are going to have second test and that is called as monoethylglycine gelidine megx test in this case 
uh, we are going to use a drug that is called as uh, lidocaine that is normally converted uh, to its metabolite uh, that is called as uh, monoethyl glycine gelidine by catalyzed by so cytochrome p450 this is a hepatic enzyme so this hepatic enzyme is going to use nadph and lidocaine is going to convert it to megx this megx amount we are going to measure here so lidocaine metabolite formation has been used as an index for the hepatic function this is because this is a medicine so normally liver is going to convert this lidocaine into the metabolite which can be excreted so if liver's uh, detoxification reaction detoxification part is perfect, working okay working fine then this conversion will be there and it will be excreted if detoxification cannot be done by liver then this is not going to be synthesized and it will not be excreted so the excretion of megx is corresponding to the uh, detoxic detoxification reaction done by liver a loss of hepatic cytochrome p450 activity or any kind of major change in the hepatic blood flow results in the megx formation so no metabolite formation or no metabolite excretions so in this case uh, we are going to give intravenous injections iv injections of a small amount of lidocaine that is 1 mg per kg body weight is given to a patient blood sample will be taken before the injections at zero hour samples and another blood sample will be taken after 15 to 30 or 30 minutes after the injections megx is going to be determined in the serum samples and um, by, and it will be determined by automated fluorescence polarization immunoassay within the 20 minute of sample collections so we can see how much megx has been converted if megx formation will be there it means detoxic detoxification reaction has been performed means cytotox cytochrome p450 worked if this conversion this uh, we have not find then means no conversion was there means cytochrome p450 is absent there this test is rapid it is having advantage that this test is rapid and easy to perform because we don't require number of uh, chemicals number of reagent number of instruments and any kind of extra hepatic megx formation uh, because they are that is if uh, any kind of conversion of lidocaine to megx has been done outside the liver that is normally very less amount and that is not normally going to affect any kind of in influencing the test so that is perfectly fine so it will give you only information about the liver's detoxification reactions third test is called as antipyrin breath test in this case we are going to use antipyrin antipyrin is a drugs which is normally analgesic we are using as antipyretics and analgesics medicine and that will be given normally through oral route or as ear drops this antipyrin like lidocaine also going to be metabolized by cytochrome p450 enzyme only but in this case if again cytochrome p450 is working okay it will be working fine or their liver is having cytochrome p450 in the working conditions this antipyrin will be metabolized and if this is not working fine it will not be metabolized so normally when given orally this uh, antipyrin is going to be absorbed from the intestine completely not bound to any kind of plasma protein and it is metabolized by liver only that is for, so from cytochrome p450 Sometimes we are, we are going to use uh, carbon-14 level and, and amino pyrins, that is dimethyl amino antipyrin is given orally in the dose of 1 to 2 micro query and breath sample will be collected for 2 to 24 hours and analyzed for the metabolite production, metabolite formation will be there because uh, this is going to be excreted. So normal subject, if person is normal, the excretion will be 5 to 8 percent of administered dose in 2 hours. That will be in case of normal person. But if liver is abnormal, liver is not going to working fine. In that case, uh, or uh, like patient of hepatitis or cirrhosis, the excretion will be only 2 to 3 percent. In a normal person, 5 to 8 percent excretion will be there. In case of hepatitis, only 2 to 3 percent excretion will be there. So excretion rate is going to be decreased. So this gives you information about the detoxification reaction or the reactions means about the status of cytochrome P450's activity. Cytochrome P450 is there or not there or active or not there. So this is uh, the three different tests which we have perform which we are going to perform normally for the detoxification reactions. So this is all about the detoxification reactions. Uh, next few days we will talk come about the come up with the another test for the liver function test. 
सो थैंक यू वेरी मच हैव ए नेक्स्ट डे इफ यू एम नॉट सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब इट थैंक यू वेरी मच